Okay. So I think we are live on to YouTube and um, Shilpa, madam, you can start it off. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Sorry for the delay in five minutes. Uh, that was because after uh, the hectic day where Dr. Jai did uh, a record of doing a TLH in four minutes, 22 seconds. Uh, we got a little delayed, but uh, I would like to congratulate him for uh, his achievement today. I don't think uh, I mean I any I, I ever thought that somebody would be doing it within uh, five minutes. I think his best was six minutes, but uh, this is really really something which uh, I think we all should be proud of. Um, so today's topic uh, is a very very basic one that is semen analysis and its interpretation. So we have chosen this topic as a master class because uh, we know where things can go wrong, especially in the peripheries and uh, in remote places where they just get a handwritten plain paper saying some uh, random numbers. And based on this, the doctors have to treat the infertile couple. So Dr. Jay will give us an insight as to what needs to be given importance and what shouldn't be based on just a simple uh, semen analysis report. So yeah, over to you, sir. Okay, ma'am. Keep the audio on. I will start the screen sharing. Screen is visible, right, madam? Yes, yes. Okay. So guys, today's topic, as I am told, is basic interpretation of semen analysis. Okay. Now, very, very important, you must understand that semen analysis practically contributes to, you know, 50% decision making as far as any person who is treating fertility is concerned. No, because male partner evaluation is absolutely critically important. Now, I want to tell you one of the commonest mistakes which happens as far as semen analysis is concerned. And one of the things which you should be very, very careful about is consistently focusing and insisting on this three to five day abstinence. Okay. This is really, really weird. Okay. Why should somebody have a three day abstinence to give a semen analysis report when Somebody is trying naturally, we ask them to have intercourse every day or every alternate day. Okay. Lots and lots of people have asked this question. I completely agree that it is illogical. It is senseless, but it is done only and only and only for standardization. And it is not even needed if you are doing semen analysis on CASA. That is computer assisted semen analysis. I'll come to that in a little while. But if you are doing computer assisted semen analysis, you do not need to do three to five day abstinence because the droplet size is in microliters. Okay. Fine. So this is the most important thing which you need to understand. The second most important thing as a treating doctor you need to understand is this thing and this is a very very irritating thing especially in a city like Bombay where you have home collection. Remember in that home collection it's important that within 30 minutes of collection okay within 30 minutes of collection the sample should reach the laboratory. Normally in Bombay the traffic is so much that the 30 minutes easily becomes 50 minutes 60 minutes one hour and you will end up getting a lot of dead sperms in this situation, you will end up getting a lot of debris in this situation. Okay. This is something which you need to keep in mind. If the time consistently exceeds more than 40 minutes, especially. Okay. So you must counsel your patient about this thing. These are practical things. Okay. The next thing which is very, very important is how to collect. Okay. See, interpretation is one thing but how to collect is the other thing okay normally what happens is we ask the male partner to go somewhere and just masturbate and give him a wide mouth container this wide mouth container okay the problem with this wide mouth container is whenever there is an ejaculate which is happening if the ejaculate doesn't go in the container there is a lot of spill which occurs this is common you will be seeing this a lot of male partners would complain about it and because there is a lot of spill there is an erroneous reporting okay the other important thing is dehydration see a lot of times when these male partners are coming for collecting semen 
already they have to reach office already somebody has you know had a fight at home wife has got angry mother has got angry mother in law has got angry some 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 such time pass happens you know and the person is really stressed and dehydrated and that causes something called as falsely low volume his volume is otherwise not very low of semen collection but this stress this tension this dehydration causes this falsely low volume so keep that in mind okay especially when you encounter low volume keep that keep these three things in mind that there is a huge chance that there is either a spill which has occurred either there is a dehydration factor involved or there is a erroneous reporting okay so just keep that in mind when you when you are looking at that report especially when you study the volume of the semen sample all right apart from this it is important that quite a lot of times when we try to interpret the semen analysis we send it to a laboratory and majority of the pathologists are going to look at it on a simple slide they will put one drop of sperm somewhere and they'll put a cover slip over it and it is called as a very good reporting you know how this reporting is done this slide is made and the technician will come and the technician will come and report it after let's say one hour okay this is the worst method out of the entire lot okay so i will label this as worst okay and this occurs in more than 90% of the country okay but this is the worst this is cheap also so apart from being worst it is going to cost you less than 500 rupees okay in some cities where some commission and all these things is involved it will cost you around 600 700 the other good way of testing it is on something called as a macular chamber this macular chamber is a beautiful you know small spot which has nice grid which is present in the center okay this is something which is commonly available okay you anybody who has an andrology setup okay or an iui setup or a level 1 setup okay all these guys should invest in a macular chamber this macular chamber is going to cost you around 50000 rupees it is good because it allows you counting of the sperm in a particular chamber and you need to count in approximately 10 chambers but it is important to understand the sperms are motile so how will you count in 10 chambers right so at any given point in time whatever you count in a particular chamber okay is considered to be the value of that chamber even if the sperm moves outside into the other chamber that is okay all right so that is important but macular chamber is otherwise the absolute standard of reporting and it is important that whenever you report any semen analysis semen analysis is based on standard criteria of who reporting okay you can't really have your criteria the standard criteria of who reporting is critically important where four things are very very important volume count per ml total count motility and if you are following strict criteria then morphology as well and the values are very very straight forward the values are volume has to be at least more than 1.5 ml counts per ml at least more than 15 million per ml total count at least more than 39 million per ejaculate okay very simple motility total motility more than 40% rapid progressive motility more than 32% okay that is also important and morphology if you are following strict criteria then more than 4% so somebody who is reporting has to follow this criteria for reporting okay only then it is considered to be a standardized report all right and finally comes in what is casa this casa is basically a computer assisted semen analysis it is it is a software driven calculation okay it is a software driven calculation of the semen okay and it is a very very good calculation you can allow to keep multiple records of this and you can have a wonderful follow up we have been using casa since the last 5 5 and 1/2 years and we are extremely happy and this is one of the standards of reporting which you should follow okay we will go on to the next chart where i will just clear off this thing first okay shilpa madam i hope everything was visible so far yes okay 
So we are going to go on to the next chart of semen analysis. Now it is important to understand clinical interpretation of semen analysis. See, if you draw the male reproductive system, that is the testis, it is going to lead into epididymis. From the epididymis, there is going to be vas deferens. Vas deferens will lead into seminal vesicle, which will lead into an ejaculatory duct. This ejaculatory duct actually passes through the prostate, okay, which then exits through the male urethra into the outer world through the penis. Okay. Now everything is very, very important. All right. Most important, where are the sperms produced? Sperms are produced in the testis. Transported into the was and stored in the seminal vesicles okay at every stage there is a different science behind everything right so whenever they are stored in the seminal vesicles contribute to something very important they contribute to seminal fluid which constitutes to approximately 35 to 40 percent of the sperm sample. The prostate contributes to prostatic fluid and the prostatic fluid also contributes to approximately 35 to 40%. The sperms basically are going to contribute to approximately less than 5% of the entire sample. Rest of the entire sample is obviously going to be miscellaneous. And when I say miscellaneous, it is going to be including all the other enzymes, debris, proteins, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And this whole thing is ejaculated. Okay. Is not ejaculated as a liquid. This whole thing is actually, actually ejaculated out as something called as a coagulum. Now, because it is ejaculated out as a coagulum, this coagulum has to liquefy and as a result of which liquefaction time is important. This liquefaction time is actually derived on enzymes coming from the prostatic fluid and liquefaction time should be ideally less than 30 minutes. Liquefaction time consistently more than one hour should raise some alarm bell. Okay, fine. Whenever we are looking at semen analysis, one basic understanding, okay? The cause for having a defect in the semen analysis can either be pretesticular, it can either be testicular, or it can either be post-testicular, okay? So, simple things understand. If it is a testicular problem, Okay, that means if it is azuspermia, vas deferens is absent, it is a testicular problem, nothing can be done. If there is inherent sperm production which is low due to oligospermia, idiopathic oligospermia, nothing can be done. If it is an inherent problem where seminal vesicles are absent, where fructose will also be absent. Okay, fructose absent is basically seminal vesicles absent. Nothing can be done in all these situations. So basically testicular causes, na, are something which you can't really end up treating. Please keep that in mind. Your pre-testicular causes are simple to treat. Pre-testicular causes are going to be predominantly everything else. Obesity, stress, hormones, weight, smoking, drinking, lifestyle. All this is external factors which cause any problem onto the testis. How will you come to know about all this on semen analysis? Okay. Remember, when you interpret semen analysis, you are supposed to interpret 1, 2, and 3. You are not going to look at a semen analysis unless there is azuspermia and you will say, ah, this is this is pre-testicular, this is post-testicular. No, nothing like that will come in mind. But keep this brief picture in your head. Okay. Next, when we look, next, when we move on, no, please understand that when you are trying to study your semen reports, one of the other thing which irritates majority of the doctors is presence of pus cells and debris. Okay, first, no, it is very, very important that how pus cell and debris is reported. Most of the times, most of the times, it is the debris which is going to be reported as pus cells, as a result of which history taking is very, very important 
when there is persistently high percentage okay very very important history taking is very very important even when there is sudden onset oligospermia especially post infections especially post viral infections especially post covid it was something which was very common in that pandemic all right so this history taking for pus cells is important if the male partner is telling you that you know no big problem otherwise okay i am able to ejaculate not having any pain if there is no much pain no then this pus cell is usually coming from here from the glands penis so you ask the male partner to just clean up okay just go home just clean the external genitalia and once the external genitalia is cleaned up okay uh, after that what is going to happen is that within 3 to 4 days this pus cells are going to become absolutely fine okay and when they become absolutely fine you are going to be very very happy because suddenly the pus cells have disappeared just in case the pus cells are persistent keep in mind you need to do something called a semen culture along with urine culture it's semen culture plus urine culture i have discussed this in a master class already but just remember that you need to do both of this to interpret what is the infection and then you need to treat them with antibiotics okay the other important thing which a lot of people worry about and a lot of people don't really understand is morphology of the sperms okay i am only going to touch upon the morphology i guess uh, i've told shilpa madam to have a specific master class on sperm dna fragmentation and sperm morphology okay but we will touch upon a lot of those parameters in that so sperm morphology and whenever we are looking at the strict criteria which are established we are basically trying to study this the sperm head this sperm head then has a mitochondria of course middle piece is what we call it and then it has a tail correct this is how basically the appearance of a normal sperm would look like this sperm head more than 80% is occupied by the nucleus okay and it has something called as a golgi body which is got converted into a acrosomal cap at the top all right now majority of the defect which you are trying to pick up trying to identify is going to be here it's going to be either in the tail or it is going to be in the head but what do you need to look at it so nice you see i have drawn it also very big you know so you need one thing that is magnification you need second thing which is called as staining you need to stain the head properly to look at the head properly you need to stain the tail properly and simultaneously you need to immobilize the sample all right so please remember you can't analyze the morphology in a motile sperm you have to keep the sperm immobile to analyze the entire morphology morphology is available as a kit we normally do morphology on casa and we also supplement it with an icsi microscope because we are a referral unit we charge very heavily approximately 5000 rupees just for reporting morphology but remember majority of the times when you go to commercial ivf clinics in order to scare the shit out of the patients everybody's morphology is going to be reported as less than 4% and they'll be told are you have only 2% normal sperms are you have only 3% normal sperms very bad opt for ivf okay actually 80% of these guys would come to our unit then because they know that we are very famous for doing morphology assessment and believe me when you look at morphology very strictly when you follow this particular algorithm of looking at morphology the amount of people in whom actually morphology will be less than 4% is going to be very very less okay we will take a special class on morphology to make people understand morphology okay and to teach them what is morphology very nicely and how the sperm grows and how the head grows and everything we will take a beautiful session on it but i hope this uh, basic understanding of of the entire uh, entire semen analysis which we need to understand from the perspective as a clinician okay has been briefly answered here i will answer a lot more questions because there are many fine points which people would want to discuss so we'll we'll prolong the question answer session today by about 10 minutes okay yes shilpa madam touch upon motility yeah okay sorry uh one of the most important things which people should remember as far as motility is concerned 
don't really get into the logic of you know uh, grade a b c d or grade 1 2 3 4 okay that is a reporting parameter that's a very good reporting parameter in fact if you look at casa casa is going to report it by velocity okay casa will report the motility based on velocity not not on the percentage motility it will report it based on velocity see this interpretation of motility honestly is best done by casa in my opinion and not by a manual person what i feel is sluggish motility somebody can feel as rapid motility the only common point between two people is going to be immotile sperms okay or sperms which are having flicker but non motile i mean not moving forward no progressive forward motility there there is no confusion the confusion arises in between rapid motility and sluggish motility that is between grade 3 and grade 4 how fast is fast right we don't really know that okay as a result of which casa has a beautiful software inside in order to judge the motility of the sperms and if anybody is really interested then they should be doing casa in order to ensure the progressive motility just like how we were discussing uh, morphology we will take a specific session just on motility so that we can touch upon a lot of antioxidants and all that which people try to promote for that but this is the basic interpretation okay of a semen analysis okay yeah so let's quickly start with the questionnaire so do you recommend two tests to be done at a certain interval to label them as abnormal in abnormal samples preferable to do two samples one month apart one month okay and uh, since you are doing in casa so i suppose you don't recommend any abstinence for your patients and many will be like uh, outstation yeah so no recommendation for abstinence i will give you one more example what if the male partner has had a nightfall on the day of doing a uh, semen analysis what will you do in that situation correct in that situation his volume will be abnormally low in that situation you will feel that are there is no debris correct in that situation you will feel that are what has happened to his counts yesterday count was 35 million today count is 22 million both are normal correct but for a for a guy who does not know how to interpret he will feel that in one week is you know counts have become half okay mm-hmm. so it is very very important that we follow these reporting standards which is why i was mentioning anything which is 16 million mm-hmm. is normal anything which is 160 million is also normal both are to be treated equally there is no difference between 16 million and 160 million okay so uh, see post covid era so you see lot of sperm abnormalities i suppose uh, after yeah. uh, infections uh, so sperm uh, and uh, say like uh, when you are evaluating a male factor so semen yeah. analysis has become only a screening test so probably you will need more and more uh, specific tests to figure out the pathogenesis or to figure out what can be done as a treatment uh, options as a clinician so what is your thought on it i mean do you think just doing one semen analysis and uh, saying that uh, okay i mean this is sufficient is it okay now or do you recommend anything in specific in fact forget doing the test whenever you are evaluating the male partner the best way to evaluate the male partner is to do a history taking and clinical examination in of the male partner in standing position simultaneously okay trust me i am really dead serious about it when you evaluate the external genitalia of the male in standing position you will come to know about varicocele on palpation which otherwise you will miss out on your semen parameters otherwise is missed out by so many ultrasonologists correct or even ultrasonologists will report everything as grade 1 varicocele okay and when you palpate there is nothing which is palpable simultaneously you will really assess the size of the testis and in that juncture when that male partner is in that examination room 20 other things will come out which will not come out when that wife is sitting beside him mother is sitting beside him father is sitting beside him okay so please keep that in your mind everybody including the female uh, fertility specialist should get into the habit of clinical examination of external genitalia of the male partner okay you do that it will help your semen analysis get much better but what shilpa madam asked and i think what is important is semen analysis only one of the tests now 
it is not the gold standard test sperm dna fragmentation on casa sperm morphology on casa any other advanced semen analysis okay is definitely the way forward as far as semen analysis is concerned and there is no doubt about it yeah um so the motility reporting that we see so they yeah. don't do it in like rapid motility or sluggish motility so they just give total motility is yeah. it do you think is it acceptable to just uh, start the treatment based on uh, uh, the total motility or would you prefer that to be given as rapid motility or i mean you don't believe in it see honestly this uh, of course this is a big topic but i'll just answer the motility of the sperms is decided apart from inherent factors that means what i mean is apart from inherent factors means apart from the anatomy it is also decided by the quality of the seminal fluid okay this seminal fluid produces lots and lots of nutrition especially fructose which is then you know used by the sperms in order to push it forward okay so don't end up interpreting only rapid motility as your benchmark and then do treatment okay your rapid motility is 22% sluggish motility is let's say 14% but according to guidelines rapid motility is to be 32% so you are 10% less start antioxidants correct that should not be the method of evaluating it because believe me the same sample if you evaluate on a meckler chamber and on casa the results will be different the computer will report motility way different than what a human will report the motility because computer has a set parameter if the velocity max velocity or the linear velocity or the curvy linear velocity of the sperm is different then it will report it differently in fact in all casa reports apart from motility you have a big page on you know how the linear motility is how the curvy linear motility is and what is the speed okay motility i think is a big chapter shilpa madam we'll take a maybe one or two master classes on it correct so let's uh, talk about it the other way so if there is zero rapid motility yeah okay. two reports of zero rapid motility mm. okay that means you have to first rule out infections second you have to rule out any other you know pre testicular causes obesity and all these things and if there are two consistent reports then definitely you should consider treatment Okay. you know one report you should not treat 100% immotility which is called as absolute asthenospermia if there are two such reports don't give antioxidants the patient will not run away from you believe me tell the truth to the patient that two reports have come which indicate almost absolute asthenospermia hardly any motile sperms you are going to require further evaluation in the form of judging the vitality of the sperm and if the vitality of the sperm is established then you will have to treat yourself for icsi through your masturbated sample and if all the sperms which have been ejaculated are dead which is called as necrosuspermia then the treatment is very difficult and you will have to take a testicular sample and do laser hatching of laser stimulation of the sperm and then treat it but you need to tell this okay you need to tell this to the patient Okay. so uh, if it is a hyper viscous sample yeah. so do you uh, recommend uh, uh, iui in such cases if it is in two samples what is your i mean everybody knows that one of the treatment of choice for hyper viscous sample is basically to do iui okay the reason why the sample is hyper viscous predominantly is because there is a defect in some of the proteins which are secreted from the prostate this prostatic uh enzymes are not functioning as much as they should okay so either you can mix it with hepis or you can do some manual lysing okay you do that and the sample normally liquefies you get good sperms but these sperms you are not going to be able to produce this result naturally so it is better to do iui in these samples ph levels what is uh, uh, your thought on it it's good but then i don't think it is the bottom line i mean it is one of the smallest uh, of the factors which people would want to look into as far as semen analysis is concerned definitely it is not even a reporting criteria there are so many semen analysis which come to you without a reporting of the ph it doesn't really matter to be honest but yes please remember semen is normally uh, 
you know alkaline in ph it goes inside an acidic vagina and this combination then allows liquefaction to occurs inside occur inside the vagina okay so agglutination plus we see many times in the reporting what does yeah. that so two three things see agglutination is going to happen predominantly when there is improper liquefaction so somebody has started to report the semen analysis even before the sample liquefied completely the reason why semen analysis should be done only on a liquefied sample is to prevent all these errors you are actually taking out see what is agglutination do you know agglutination is coagulum which is not liquefied so you have proteins where Hati sperms are stuck to each other, and you think it is an agglutinated sample. Must be some infection. It is not like that. The problem is somebody has prepared a slide without ensuring that liquefaction was complete. How do you check the liquefaction was complete? You just take a dropper, okay, and when you press the dropper, the sperm will fall down as drops. That is complete liquefied sperm sample. Otherwise, it will form down as strands. and if it is falling down as strands don't end up reporting it you will get erroneous readings low motility agglutination and reduced sperm count all the three things will come yeah um so we'll take a few questions from here uh, which antibiotic is preferable to treat uh, infection based on the culture reports so ai based semen analysis do you have any experience doing it since 6 years or now which is what is casa okay casa is ai based casa has a lot of things which are based on ai especially dna fragmentation is something which is phenomenal uh, on casa and we'll talk about it when we discuss dna fragmentation so apart from semen analysis what uh, do you recommend uh, as test for men dna fragmentation index and morphology index both the things okay So, how many cases of azoospermia are reversible in your experience? If it is non-obstructive, less than one percent. The only reversible cause of non-obstructive azoospermia is hypo hypo. Apart from that, nothing else. To be honest with you. So, how do we standardize these uh, semen analysis reports? I mean, see, there are many CASA instruments which are available for one point five lakhs, one lakh. uh so is that better than uh, having a person who is a lab technician do your semen analysis uh, uh, reporting or it is uh, the same casa is actually also reported by a technician only mm. you know you need a very good technician to report casa because the casa machine otherwise is very expensive okay on an average it is going to cost you around 12 to 18 lakh rupees if you are going with full functionality i do understand that there are some you know point of care casa machines which are available which will you know just you put a drop and you put a card and something some report will come out see all that is better than your macular chamber but you can't really end up telling me that uh, a 1 lakh rupee system is as good as a 20 lakh rupee system definitely it is not like that yaar yeah? Mm-hmm. So, in IVF failure and blastocyst formation failure cases, how yeah. much importance do you give to this uh, factor of sperm? DNA fragmentation index is important, not semen analysis. Okay, but anyways, you do it before even IUI in your. Uh... Yeah, we do it. We do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, is uh, that the way forward uh, for majority of the infertility specialists? You think? Very soon, it will be. you know very soon it will be to be honest with you uh, actually this this mention about i'll just deviate from the topic for a minute this mention about dna fragmentation is not very new madam it is something which has been reported approximately 5 to 7000 years back okay mm-hmm. in our ayurvedic literature okay if if anybody ever goes through any ayurvedic textbook for fertility okay prasuti shastra is what it is called that means you know the science which deals with fertility and women okay and if you go through their textbooks they have mentioned about problems which can occur due to weakened capacitance of the sperm weakened fertilization potential of the sperm which is basically related to the sperm's dna so it is really not a new thing at all and you know one of the methods in which they would treat this is by doing relaxation of the mind 
that is basically to reduce the stress down at that point in time we would think what stress people would have had no but i'm sure they would have they would have had something correct simultaneously if you see there is so much mention about something called as giving male partners who are unable to reproduce a bath in cold saline okay in the old literature i am not cold saline but a marble bath with cold water what is all this all this is basically to ensure that external factors or the pre testicular causes which could have caused the problem in the dna of the sperm are corrected because at that point in time fertility sure or mnf were not available no unfortunately okay so what happens is if you go through this you will understand that the logic of treatment is very simple even that time they only wanted to treat the pre testicular causes even at that time because nothing much was known testicular causes could not be treated irrespective of the things and post testicular causes we've already know okay so uh, i know that you want to take another lecture on this but see morphology we are looking at only 4% okay even yeah. though 6% of them are still abnormal you still yeah. think that 4% being normal is a normal uh, semen analysis Reporting. absolutely provided you are following strict criteria and that is very important so what is strict criteria it looks at four anomaly four abnormalities of the head one at the middle piece one in the tail and one at the neck okay so basically it looks at 10 problems all right and if any one problem is abnormal it is reported to be an abnormal sperm okay mm -hmm. if the length of the tail is less than normal if the length of the head is less than normal if the amount of vacuolation is more than normal all these things if the shape of the head is not matching so out of that honestly if you study kruger's criteria and if i do a manual reporting i think 75% sperms are abnormal you will come and report the same sample and saying no 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 only 25% are abnormal as a result of which i stated that even morphology should be done on casa because casa has preset values for everything it has got no mood changes okay it has got preset values it will report on that as long as you prepare the slide nicely that is something which nobody else can do there is no computer to prepare the slide it is a simple technique you have to follow it and then you have to report it yeah so which antioxidant do you use somebody is asking uh to be honest i have told this multiple times before one of the best antioxidants if you want to give somebody is chavanprash because chavanprash is something which has 40 antioxidants and it is something which has been proven time and again since thousands of years in indian science okay many homemade as well as commercially available preparations are available you can use any one of them okay because all of them contain very good ashwagandha jiloi everything is very good in them and any which ways all the other antioxidants which we are using are also extracts of that only so there is nothing rocket science about it to be very honest on an open platform one of the best ayurvedic drugs which works on male infertility if anybody has not tried is something called as adizoa try it okay adizoa is a plant extract which is derived in ayurveda of around eight plant extracts and it works beautifully well okay if people have not tried it all right so i think uh, we are good it's more than 40 minutes now it's exactly 40 minutes so i would oh. like to thank you for uh, having this session after your hectic day after doing uh, almost uh, 10 surgeries since morning working for 13 hours you still made time for all of us to give this uh, session on uh, semen analysis thank you very much i think uh, it was really an eye opener for uh, many who wanted to know about the basics about uh, how to interpret semen analysis thank you thank you very much